Hi, and welcome to section Structuring Scripts. In this section we will talk about how to organize your PowerShell code across several script files. Specifically we will talk about how to call scripts from other scripts, how to use scoping to organize your code, and finally we will talk about the technique called dot sourcing to load code from other script files into the current scope. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with scripts calling other scripts. The goal of this video is to learn the basics on how to organize your PowerShell code in several files while maintaining the interdependencies between the different parts. In this video we are going to introduce the command type called external scripts, see how we can call scripts from other scripts, how to maintain script references, and we will talk about keeping the script directory and the current directory concepts apart. In previous videos we talked about the different command types like functions and commandlets. Now we introduce the new script type called external script. Let's have a look at some examples. As you can see I have already several scripts loaded in the current scope. Before we move ahead let's take a minute to talk about the case study that we will be using for learning about scripting in this and later sections. We will create a client library for a REST-based API. Let's have a look. I've created a short link for it. posh-zone record. Now this is an API provided by Dane Simple a company that delivers internet domain services. The Zone Record API allows us to create, update and list and delete DNS records. We will make a PowerShell client library for performing these tasks. Notice that when calling the API the client will have to include an access token in the request. We will have to create some functionality to handle these tokens as well. Now let's get back to PowerShell. First, let's create a script file getZoneRecordPS1. Now, let's imagine that before getting a zone record, we need to retrieve an access token, and that the code for this is in a separate file. We can execute a separate file via the ampersand operator. Now that we have the token, let's just uh, pass it on to the standard output. So this is it for our main file. Now let's go ahead and create the get access token PS1 file. It's going to be very simple. Let's just return a string token. And that's it. Now let's go, uh, go ahead and run the script. That worked well. Our get zone record script called the get access token script and pass the token on. Now but let's try and change the directory and then call the script. Now that doesn't work. Why not? The problem here is our reference from get zone record.ps1 to get access token.ps1. This reference up here dot backslash get access token dot ps1 is relative to the current directory and now we have changed the current directory so how can we fix this there are several strategies let's try one of them so if we move to the get zone record file let's first make this a string and then maybe we can uh, use the get location commandlet Let's try that. But again, that doesn't work either because the get location also refers to the current directory and not a directory relative to the script itself. So the key here is to use a special variable called ps script root, which is the directory in which the currently executing script resides. So let's try then. And now it works. Good. So the 
PS script root variable was introduced in PowerShell 3. Now if we want to make our script backwards compatible, there is quite a simple way to do that. So I have a little snippet here. So what I just did here is that I create a check. If the PS script root is not defined, then I go ahead and define it by using this special variable here that contains the path of uh, the current script. So in this way our script is also runnable in PowerShell 2 for instance. So it still works. So let's move back to the work directory. And now let's try and make some more script files for our project. So let's just copy the get zone record the file called add zone record ps1. Now we have two scripts that depend on a third, but we do not necessarily want users to call the get access token uh, script directly. So then I would like to organize the scripts a little bit where I put the get access token, which is actually a helper script into a separate subdirectory. So let's clean this up a bit. Make a directory for library files. And then we can move the get access token to that directory. And then we have to go and clean up our scripts here. We have to refer to lib and also in the add zone. So there, let's have a look. So basically now we have two files, add zone record.ps1, get zone record.ps1, which are dependent on a third helper script, get access token.ps1. So now we have organized our, our files in a pretty sensible manner. Walking up to this library here, it's uh, quite evident that as a client user, I should use these two scripts. This is for library purposes.